Okay, my friends, again, I am commenting on Google Earth and structures on Facebook. They have 2.4 million subscribers. Now, I they have let me post up here, which is very unusual. So I am just commenting, trying to be nice. Hello, my outstanding friends. Has anyone been following the asteroid Bennu retrieval and ongoing research? We retrieved a sample from asteroid Bennu and brought it back to Earth in 2023, and very interesting results. Bennu is biological in every single way and contains DNA, RNA, uracil, all the nucleobases, and all the organic molecules, over 16,000 of them, same as we have in us. Now, this is a from their comment on the internet. Sci you know, in quotation, scientists have found abundant carbon, which is a, in us, we're carbon-based creatures, abundant carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, which is in membranes, organic compounds, thousands and thousands of them, including 14 of the 20 amino bases. Those are the things that make up DNA and so forth, used by life on Earth. All five nucleobases found in DNA and RNA. And I know what Bennu is. Do you? I'm asking them that question. I suggest looking up heart sarcomeres and the anatomy of hearts. Also look into psyche, which is the same, but bigger. Okay, my friends, this is a shocker du jour. Scientists are getting closer to finding evidence of the fifth force. If it's out there, could we observe it soon? And they're talking about a fifth force. Well, what fifth force of what? Some physicists believe that a fifth fundamental force could be the cause of some observational anomalies. A study is investigating ways to closely examine the trajectories of, well, they're talking about a force of physics. So I wanted to see what is the fifth force. I'm not kidding you. I just looked this up and it blew my mind. Where do you hear this? It was saying that although the study shows no fifth force anomaly present in asteroid Bennu. Where did I show you what asteroid Bennu is? Now they're going out to asteroid apophysis which is not a good, apophis means dead, I think, death. So if maybe it could provide an even better chance to find this elusive force if it exists at all. Well, let's look at asteroid Bennu, but first of all, look at this. This just absolutely stunned me. Listen to this. I asked chat, which I did, they give you the general consensus of opinions. It's quick, easy, and because it, that's the academic side of things. Now listen to this. Can you explain the fifth force? That's all I asked, chat. Can you explain the fifth force? Just what we were looking at a minute ago, which they're talking about a physics force. Now listen to this. Absolutely. Let's take a deeper look at the fifth force in the context of scientific disruption. If mud fossil theory were proven true, <laughs> I am the fifth force. <laughs> the scientific method and academic gatekeeping. The fifth force in this context is metaphorical. It refers to the societal and institutional forces that shape science, including scientific method, academic system, peer review, and consensus. So I am the fifth force. Look at if Roger Spur's mud fossil claims were validated, this force would be disruptive in a major way. Well, yeah, and it is true, and it has been proven, and it just needs to be looked at. The gatekeeping is the key. Okay, these are the, the statements from NASA. Surprising phosphate finding in NASA's OSIRIS REx. I'm going to explain that in a minute because phosphates come from the phospholipid membranes which surround the heart sarcomeres. This is from NASA, the National Science Foundation, Smithsonian. They're all trying to figure out how can we better understand the diversity and characteristics of this venue. 
by examining the stuff they brought back. And this is the stuff they brought back. All right, this is the stuff they brought back. And these are the phosphate surprise, these white little layers that overlay these what are called sarcomeres. There's a layer of phosphates, a layer of sarcomeres, a layer of phosphates, a layer of sarcomeres. And then inside, if you look carefully, you can see there's some bundled fibers. All right, my claim is, is that this is muscle from a heart. These are sarcomeres. This is why I can say that. This is what a heart attack victim looks like. These are the phosphate layers. These are the sarcomeres. And this is a tear in the muscle, but this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is what they came back with, was chunks of muscle with phosphates on the top and bottom in bundles. And this was from a heart. It has all of the, the signatures of life. And this is what it looks like. These are valves. These are not just round little spots. Those are valves in a heart. The rest of this was just nothing more than biology, which is what they, they, they realize, and they claim that's true. They're nothing more than sarcomeres. But what else, where else are there sarcomeres? There's sarcomeres here on Mars. They say all these layers came from millions and millions of years of erosion. No, that's not true. This is Mars. This was a creature's body. Everything is gigantic. And I mean, it's gigantic. This is pretty big, but this here is psyche. And this is a, a picture. This is not an artist's rendition. They're up there. They have explored it because it's, it's saturated with metals, because metals are in blood. That's a tube coming out. That's a tube coming out. These are valves. That is tendon. And that latches into the heart so the heart can, the muscle can do that sort of stuff. And that is what we have here on Bennu. I mean, that's Psyche. Bennu's the same thing. They're both hearts. And the Mars crab, this is nothing more than sarcomeres, once again, muscle. That is right from here, which is an artery, and the veins sitting on top of it. All of those are the little blood vessels that bring the, the blood into the muscle. Now, I've studied these quite deeply. I have the same sort of stuff here. This is muscle attached to tendon. Then there was a bone here. This is the same thing. It's just the bone's not showing up here. And this is the same kind of muscle. And that is a tendon. See, there's no pink in there. The tendon have almost no blood. Anyway, I understand this stuff very well. I, I'd like to be able to speak, and so far I've been blocked from talking. Okay, my friends, I'm sorry to say, but mud fossils has changed the world in the most profound way. These are all mud fossils. They're out in space because they were thrown into space by the collision of Venus into Mars, which created this trench it's wider than the United States. And it actually sucked the electric discharge from Mars. It has no more magnetic field. And it zzzz, zaps right into Venus, which is, this is an electrical arc welding scar into Venus. Venus also almost hit Earth and caused our cataclysm, which was the Great Flood. All these things were written about in the past. The battles in the heavens, these gigantic things. That heart right there, in, at Psyche, it's 140 miles across, 140 miles. And it's a heart, I don't care what anybody says, the, the, the color of blood, the red, the, the uh, yellow and the black tubes coming out of it, those aren't craters, those are tubes. That's a tube, that's a tube. You know, they really can't deny this, and when you look at it, and anatomically, you just, you just can't deny it. Because what happens is this pops right off the top of the heart and you end up with the valves right here. And I see them in the mud fossils too all the time. And that's psyche and this is the heart. And so Ben used the same thing. There's just no difference. No difference whatsoever. They're, all, they're both hearts. And this was when they landed on Venus. And Venus has the little balls too, which are just like the, the blueberries. Right here, these are Mars blueberries. They're the same, exactly identical to
to the Moki marbles. And underneath, this is basement layer of skin. The rest of the skin has just eroded away. And it, that had all these little straps going to every one of those balls. And there's still some of that up on Mars, too. It's called the Mars Morse Code. Here it is right there. These are those balls I just showed you, which are the same as the Moki marbles. All right? And the straps have eroded, eroded away. In this case, they didn't. This is skin. This is literally skin. It's pinched here and stretched there. The straps make it come back to where it's supposed to be into sort of more or less a uniform pattern like that. That's pinched skin. That's pinched skin. That's stretched. That's stretched. That's stretched. It will erode down to the Moki marbles, which are the, <laughs> the blueberries. If they can't understand this, we need to have people there that do understand this. We need biologists, we need chemists, we need somebody that has looked at the ancient texts, which explain all of this. It's all explained. It's the human mind just cannot absorb the reality of the universe that we actually do live in. Okay, I'm going to cut this a little short. This was um, NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission. Curiosity went up there in 2015 to Mars, and I have shown you the stuff from Mars, the Mars blueberries, the Mars Morse code, the Mars sarcomeres. Then they originally reported that they thought they might have found fossils on Mars, and psh, that shot right off. They said, oh, that's all pareidolia. These people don't know what they're talking about. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I know exactly what that is, and any doctor will as well. Any good anatomist, chemist, doctor. I, I do all of this stuff, so I'm not bragging. It's just true. And if anybody wants to discuss it with me, I would be more than happy to talk about the chemistry, the biology, the anatomy, the ancient texts. I understand all of it now. This has been a long time research. You don't pick up this overnight. But this is undeniable. And we are literally being led to, to, for billions and billions of dollars to do this. And there's just no, you know, wow, we found all this stuff. Well, it doesn't mean anything. Well, of course it means something. It means that that's our heart in space. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now, I'm going to, and there's no denying this. It's time to put it out in an open forum and see if they can withstand the evidence and they cannot. So I'm going to go back to um, Facebook here and show you. I'm going to post this and finish up because I gave them all the same pictures and, and I'm going to actually, in addition, put this video link to this. So I'm going to go ahead and post this now on um, this fabulous site. Okay, it's posted now. It's going to all these other sites. There's like nine of them. Nobody has ever let me post other than this one here, Google Earth Structures and Anomalies. 2.4 million subscribers. That's a lot. Whether they'll allow this, I don't know. This is all common knowledge now. I'm not, I didn't say anything that I can't stand behind. So will they allow it? I don't know. But... Um, as far as I'm concerned, we need to start talking about this. We need to start getting this in an open discussion. And um, otherwise, we're just walking around in circles. And this is costing us billions of dollars. And they want to go back up to Mars and retrieve some rock samples. Cost another $11 billion. And take years and years and years to do it. It's, you know, you, you can only milk that cow so long. <laughs> and uh, right now, I think she's running out of milk. And we need to take a look at this. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for anything other than that. All right? I love you all. Thanks.